Hello, I'm Token Art. Welcome to the studio. You're going to lay down there, are you? Okay. A pussycat is laid on the floor right behind where I'm stood. That could prove interesting. <laughs> That's a little ginger Theo who's laid down there. Right, so I'm going to change my glasses so I can see what I'm doing easier always helps. A cup of tea which also helps. Would you like to see the little pussy cat? Thank you. Can I say hello to the viewers? Here we go. Okay. This here is the other kitten. Although he's a year old kitten these days. He's a young man, aren't you? Hmm? You're a young man. He has been the um, a subject of a pyrography. And uh, he's been with us just over a year now, haven't you? Hmm? Since about September, yes, yeah, since September. But he was. Uh, a kitten back then, or quite a, a boisterous little kitten, it's bouncing all over the place, almost literally. Mm, feel like a tigger. And he'll stand almost any amount of attention, won't you? You do know I'm going to have to put you down shortly, don't you? Mm? Now purring away. If you couldn't get, if you couldn't guess that by the way he's uh, rubbing his head, eh? you have been 
Possibly under a car, but you have got your fur dirty. Mm, you've been rolling in the dirt. Roll around your ears there. We put you down. You probably don't want to be put down. You want to be stroked, don't you? Hmm? You just want to be stroked and played with. Let's put you down. I can see your tail, we. There you go. Alright, you've gone the chair then. And we'll go back to that view there. Right, now that the pussy cat interlude is over, he's gone and laid on my chair down there, where he will probably stay for most of the stream. So let's do some carving. I think, um, judging by how I probably want to shape this banner, I need this to be thinner. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to make it thinner. Are oh, you off? Okay. Let's put my foot control on the floor where it will actually do the job it's supposed to do. And uh, we'll start by cutting just around this edge. Which will make it easier to easier to carve. You think this sounds like a dentist drill? That's partly because it is a dentist drill that I'm using. That's the drill bit that is. Uh, whilst dental technicians might use the handpiece that I've got here, uh, your dentist wouldn't normally use it in a surgery. But the um, the bit that's in the end is almost possibly wood. Hey, hello, good evening. You're here early tonight. How are you today? Okay, that's good. You just missed, well, you just, <laughs> uh, you missed uh, Theo, who joined us for the start of the stream tonight. He's currently now uh, wandered off, but 
Uh, he was uh, sat behind me for a little bit whilst I started the stream, so he's been uh, he introduced the stream. Right, so flat or flat or gouge. Flat or gouge. That is the question, as it often is. Um, let's let's go for the gouge, uh, but we'll go for a wide gouge, quite a, a shallow one. I just don't know how far I want to take this down. I need to, it needs to go lower to give me enough room to carve the banner, I think, so. Forgot to do across the bottom of there. Never mind. So, Wolfie, whilst you're here, one of the things I'm thinking about at the moment is whether or not to continue streaming seven nights a week. Because it's... Um, what well, it's a lot of work, that's not strictly true, but what it's doing is it's not letting me... Um, give me time to do anything else. So, for example, finish off the, um, finish off the website or... Um, you know, put put the pyrography, for example, onto uh, Etsy. Um, so I am thinking about um, cutting down the number of nights that I stream. Don't know what the, what you perhaps think about that. Um, it would also give me the potentially give me the opportunity then also to do things like some specific uh, YouTube type videos, or well, say YouTube because I can always put them here on Twitch as well, but uh, like specific short videos on things like um, <clears throat> how to start pyrography and things like that, or how to start whatever. Um, yeah. It's, it's a time thing. You know, two, um, uh, two hours a night is actually quite a lot of time. Well, it's, it, it tends to be like more like two and a half hours with the setup and the breakdown and things like that. But uh, I don't know. I shall. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm not um, not definitive at the moment either way. It sort of keeps coming to uh, keeps coming to my mind when I um, I sort of see things like the uh, this thing is sat here on my um, on the stool here just to the side of me. I keep thinking I must get that up on uh, up on uh, on Etsy or or at very least sort of just put a piece about it up on the website and things like that. I ought to do at that point. Is that thick enough yet? No, it's still not thick enough. Thin enough.
Uh, we're getting down there, okay. One of the, often one of the most difficult things to sort out when you're carving is just all the levels that you want things to be at. Of course, as you get better at it, um, you get to learn uh, what you want and uh, how to get there. Uh, and you can do it a lot, uh, a lot more easily. I wish I was learning just as quickly as that, because uh, I still take quite a bit of time to get to the sort of levels that I think I want. Uh, I think I can take that down even more actually. It looks like a fairly thin frame. So if we come down to, yeah, about there. Right. As usual, cut those off. Don't uh, don't pull them off. Don't trust me. Don't trust the vice. <laughs> She's a real sad thing. You ought to be able to trust the, the equipment. So I've got about the sort of level I'm, I'm after, I think, there. It's one of these things for me, uh, because I'm not that good at this, that I kind of have to do it. So I, I go to where I think, then look at it and go, no, nah, actually that's not right, and, and take more off and so on until I get to where I want it to be. say it probably it's probably something which does come quite a lot more easily with uh, with more experience which means that you probably have to sit through quite a lot more of me sort of doing it and then redoing it until uh, I gain that experience As usual with carving, it helps. It's almost mandatory that you carve across the grain. You don't carve with the grain. Sometimes you have no choice. And in this particular piece, the grain is level. It's flat all the way across, which is causing its own um, own difficulties. And mainly that the wood, well wood splits really easily if you're carving along the grain. You're driving a wedge basically um, along the grain and uh, it can't help but split. And uh, if, you, if you're forced to carve along the grain then what you've got to do is control that in some way. Things like stop cuts help and uh, that's an exaggerated form of which is what I was doing at the start with the power tools, but um, just driving a chisel vertically down also produces a stop cut. Uh, because a stop cut, if you, a rip if you like, always stops if, when it meets another, another rip. There's a gap, so it can't physically carry on. Um, of course, you can do things to help it carry on, 
like you could do if you were ripping a piece of paper. You put too much effort into it and you'll carry on past the gap. But um, as long as you're not uh, overdoing it, which you shouldn't really be when you're carving, then uh, stop cuts are, uh, are what stop you ripping the wood and uh, going into areas that you didn't mean to. Yeah, that's still too high in there, but we'll uh, we'll de deal with it afterwards. What I could really do with is sort of a flat chisel, which is slightly larger than this one, but not as large as the seven eight inch one that I've got. Sort of somewhere in between would be great, because sometimes this one's a little bit. A little bit small when you're trying to uh, do do areas. What that means is it's it's easy to twist the chisel and therefore not get a flat a flat surface. And uh, the smaller the chisel, the easier it is. Don't try and clean that up. There we go. Get the big chisel out to do that. So just giving myself a little reminder there. The big chisel is wider. It's a lot harder to, uh, to, to twist and therefore a lot less likely to dig in and things like that. to go down even further. Sometimes you can feel it and I can clearly feel it there. This is too high but it's also just as easy sometimes to just look. And then that doesn't want to go. It means I'm not doing it right. I'm carving on isn't right either, but I can't easily come at it from the other direction uh, because I just physically can't get the chiselling. So that click you might have just heard is the wood splitting. The very stuff you don't want it to do. Right, yeah, and it's It's split slightly downwards and uh, I've now got a rough surface. What I'm going to do now is carve that rough surface away. So the split was a bad thing. There, um, it created a rough surface. It's gone slightly lower than I wanted it to go. So now it won't be too much of a problem here. But had I done it here, for example, um, I'd have had to carve the whole thing down a level below where it, where the split had gone to.
So Wolfie, have you been doing anything interesting today or has it just been a, a relaxing day? Um, I have spent the day being busy. I, I've been doing accounts, which is not, not necessarily interesting, <laughs> but uh, it has kept me busy all day. Uh, I haven't done them for some time and I need to catch up. This is one of those cases where I could perhaps do with a, a smaller chisel as well, just to get in there. Because I've got a rough surface which I want to get rid of. Which I can only do, actually I might might get in a bit more with the uh, with the big chisel because it's got wings on the side of it. It, it comes out in a, a curved shape on the side, uh, which gives me... Kind of like a point I can get in with. So we'll break out the big chisel. Oh, when I start, always when I start streaming, it feels warm in here, and then gradually over time it settles down. Um, it's just me suddenly doing more work than I've been doing. You have been, you've been smashing noobs. I thought, I read that at first as smashing rocks, and I thought, what? And then, then I actually read what you put. <laughs> What's the what game's this in? Now, even with a big chisel like this, it, it is totally possible to um, uh, to carve an uneven surface. Uh, it's it's possible because you still can twist this. Um, but the other way is to carve it up and down like that and uh, you still get an undulating surface. So. You know, I was just thinking then, you, know, you, you just said you were smashing noobs. I mean, there is, um, you, you could put that, uh, you could put spin on that, you know, and make it sound better. You have been showing uh, noobs how an experienced person can beat them very easily and thus give them insight into how they need to develop. <laughs> In other words, you've been smashing them. <laughs> been reading a few CVs at work. <laughs> and you um, you get a bit sensitive to language like uh, like that. You sort of go, hmm, this sounds like somebody's rewording something.
Has that streamer um, determined your gender yet, uh, Wolfie, or have they given up? <laughs> Eventually you might. <laughs> I can't actually get that chisel in there. It's um I mean that story as you said is it, it's quite a funny one but um, I was just thinking then it, it is the sort of thing which would not frustrate me in the, in the least to uh, you know to, to be having to try and guess that on the other hand give me a, a computer program that doesn't work but there's nothing wrong with it and I can find that intensely frustrating and um, also t tremendously fascinating to try and find find the answer but uh, Of course, I'm sure you've heard the um, the old joke, haven't you, uh, Wolfie? How do you keep an idiot in suspense? Um. Uh, guessing, um, I guess, suspense, um, yeah, guessing is probably a, a good sort of way of describing how do you keep an idiot guessing. I'll tell you tomorrow. Which is which is a little unfair given that English isn't your first language. A little bit of a play on words, but um, it's it, it is kind of a troll, is that? Uh, 
that thing. Keeping an idiot in suspense or keeping an idiot guessing. Because there's an inherent um, inference in there. Uh, in that I'm not telling you, so you're guessing. That's um, that's along the class of um, jokes along the, that are uh, like um, uh, in English. It's a long word. It's anti-establishmentarianism. So how do you spell it? Actually, that one is kind of a good one for uh, for people who's who uh, where English is not their first language. Be just a little bit more there and then we've reached a nice level on uh, on this side now when you're carving I've got this side here and this side here because they're completely detached from one another, you there is no actual requirement for them both to be the same thickness. Even though they should look, you know, maybe you, you would think they should be because of what they are, they don't have to be. So you can sometimes, you know, you don't have to get micrometers out, rulers or anything. You can just go, nah, it doesn't matter because you can't see that they are different um, and uh, sometimes that can save you a lot of work in this particular case um, I will be taking that down further this at the moment though slopes up and I don't want it to slope up and by the way the answer to spelling it is IT It's another example of uh, we were talking about before about two sentences that set together make people think you've said something different to what you've actually said.
Now if I wanted to get something like this really flat, what I can do is turn the tool over and use it a bit like a knife and I'm kind of planing it. It's, um, it's a little bit difficult to do and you're going to kind of hold it flat. At the moment though it's somewhat slightly too undulating for that but you can uh, you can do it. It's not uh, it's not an easy thing to do but you can do it uh, because of course the, the chisel is, it, it works better when you've got a larger area but because uh, the chisel is flat as you run it over if you create find a high spot the the chisel will dig in and take it off Now, even though this is a fairly large block of wood, I do have to be careful. It is possible, uh, especially uh, with the grain as it is, to take the whole top of that off just by uh, driving the chisel in here and causing it to split. When you are creating stop cuts though, one of the things that's when you get you to your final level, like say this was, one thing you gotta be careful of is creating a stop cut which goes deeper than that because you end up then with a black edge around here, like a shadow, because of course you've just uh, dug deep down into the wood. And uh, I think it doesn't look very good. Now, switch out the chisels because the big chisel won't get into this corner here. So I've found out. So I need to come in with a small chisel to tidy up in there. And we'll be for... Right, slopes up there. chisel could do with a little bit of a sharp. <laughs> Put that down before I start banging my hand into it. At some point, you know, I ought to get a new strop. After a while, leather does lose its... Um, abilities. There we go. That's 
loaded that up with polish. Let's just get those loose bits off. So all the black that's on here is actually metal from the chisels. I'm holding this bevel down and I'm holding the bevel flat so the chisel itself is at an angle. So I'm keeping a flat that flat. You've got to be careful with the bevels not to actually eventually round them off. And I drag that backwards a couple of times there because the way this tends to work is it bows the very sharp end over. So when you drag it backwards it strains it out which creates the really sharp edge. And usually when you've uh, shammed a chisel like that it's, uh, it's quite noticeable when you then uh, Use it again. do is get out a small V gouge, which I think is that one. Mm, not sure. No, I think that's a U gouge. I think this is the V. Can we, at this small size it's really hard to tell. Yeah, that's the V. What I'm going to do is get, uh, get into this corner here and there's a little tiny bit of wood. Using the V-gouge I, uh, I can get right into the corner where the big chisel, well, big chisel, the, uh, the flat chisel I'm using can't get in there. And I what I can do is drive down like that as well, but I'll do that afterwards. I've got to clean up all the way around the edge at some point. Just not yet. Right, so, put this sawdust on the floor. bit of false perspective. I have got to carve that down and carve it such that it looks like it's going to fold under. <laughs> and I am thinking about the best chisel to use for that and I'm not altogether sure I'm picking the right one but I'm picking it anyway. So we're going to start high points about there, so let's start here. <laughs> Actually what I can do, yeah. So if I start up, down and I start coming up again there, which means this middle bit here Oh, where's my pencil? <coughs> pencil, 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 you're around somewhere. There we go. So effectively, this area here is going to be the low point. 
and this area here is the high point and then we're coming up again at the edges. At least at this point here I have the advantage that I am carving a cross grain. I'm going to get a problem there aren't I? Okay, before I get that far then let's... I want to carve it as two different blocks, that and that, so rather than, well, I've just created a stop cut basically. So this lettering is about to go away. Uh, should go all the way over that frame there as well. Now you could do this with a power tool, uh, if you do you really want to use the largest size that you can, uh, just because it's really hard to carve a curve smoothly across the whole of the piece. It basically will dig in and, uh, and create all sorts of marks. This is one, uh, one time where the chisels help they do sort of do a smooth cut. Again it's one of these things that you know you, you choose the right tool for the job at the time or rather the best tool for the job at the time. Sometimes the best tool is the wrong one <laughs> but you know you work with what you've got.
all these sort of rough, sort of fingery looking bits of wood kind of like they've been split away. They're not properly cut, but um, as long as we're careful, they'll be alright. These are the ones you don't want to pull because this is where it can create a bigger. Um, it can drag more of the lower wood with it. If you're new to carving, one of the things you carve with is bevel down. So bevel against the wood, don't do it the other way around. Um, the, one of the reasons is the way in which the wood drives the chisel. So if you put the bevel down, the wood will always try and push the chisel up out of the wood, which means it doesn't dig in, which is, uh, which is useful. It also means by just pushing the back of the chisel down a little bit you can force the chisel to come up out of the wood so you can create like a, a scoop. You try it the other way around and effectively um, your chisel starts to drive down into the wood and then you've got no way of bringing it back up. Clean this up and take a look. All through this, I've got to remember about this frame here. Although I think probably um, I'm going, everything's going deeper than I first thought it was going to. So I thought I'd be leaving this uh, maybe a little bit, uh, a tenth of an inch maybe, you know, a couple of millimetres. I may actually be going a lot lower down with it. Just because this banner is going to need to go lower just to get the shape. I do is when you feel this it's got to feel as though it goes down because one thing people do do with carvings is they stick their fingers on them and they feel them and uh, I don't know what it is about carvings but people old people always do it so it's got to feel like it goes down and comes up this is kind of does it's a little bit rough uh, which we will smooth off but it's got to be sort of a, a smooth transition from the high point to the low point and then then back up again Thank you. 
No bad, let's get a big one on it. You are where to restart your PC, okay. Was that an update or um, a problem? Using a big chisel like this, one thing you can do sometimes is turn it, drive it slightly sidewards because then it acts partially like a knife, which sometimes helps uh, get it to go through the wood. Now sometimes it's hard to come up, but one of the problems if I turn around and I'm going to, to carve down is to get it to meet smoothly at the bottom. <laughs> so rather than figuring out what what applications to close because you've got so many open, you just shut down the PC, which closes them all to start up again. Wouldn't it be easy just to go, well I suppose if you've got lots of them open it might well take longer to actually uh, close them all rather than it would be to, uh, to restart I suppose, yeah. <laughs> well that's a novel, uh, a novel way of solving the problem. deeper probably I think because hmm. Okay, I'm trying to decide how deep to carve this. This is a, a banner, it's a, you know, in theory a cloth banner. So, quite a, I'm going to have to put that over there I think because I keep looking at the stream deck instead of the camera. 
Uh, it's a cloth banner, so you know it can be sort of curved, that sort of shape. Um, does, it can be at an angle. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat. It does, we generally speaking, want to be smooth, though. So. It's kind of an expectation that people have. So literally with this finger I'm actually literally holding the chisel down. I don't want it to, to bounce up out of the work. Um, it also helps control it. So it does also doesn't bounce up in my face for example. Now I don't have a lot of space to create the curve in, so I want the, the apex to be probably about here before it starts curving under. So I'm just extending this, um, this shape slightly. Now this is almost finished carving this because um, uh, you really can't, well you, you can sort of block carve it and then come back and finish carve it but essentially the block carve wants to be almost close to, uh, to finished levels so that's what I'm kind of doing here because uh, essentially the next stage having done that would be to carve the lettering out in this particular thing here. Well the letter carving may well be something that we leave till closer to the edge just because of the chance of knocking the middles of, out of the E's for example is uh, it's quite a real one. Yeah it's nice and smooth there. Uh, tip if you're uh, doing things like this is um, if you want to make it look considered and um, you know what you're doing. Whilst you stood here thinking what am I going to do next? If you ask me like a cup of tea then people don't know that you're thinking desperately what am I going to do next? You think you're just having a cup of tea.
and that gives you time to think. Which is why uh, also people, when they're speaking a lot, do things like uh and um, because they're thinking. They might not know that they're thinking, but that's essentially what's happening. And that's why they go uh, because they're filling in. creating a curve To do this really carefully because of that grain that I mentioned earlier and the fact that it will split like it's trying to do there. I don't want that to split. And that's going to be a problem. Always carving to try and join in the middle of a dip is hard. Because you get things like that, which you might not be able to see, but essentially I've dug in. And now I'm going to carve it from the other side to get rid of that loose piece. But what I'm trying to do is join it. Now I've created a ragged bit at this end here. And you end up chasing your tail. So to speak. Trying to get rid of these little tags that are being created. Oh, God, that's why I've cut those off. Cannot pull them, it will go all the way through to this edge. They have to be cut off. That one's just split all the way across. As I kind of knew it would. I'm shaping the edge of this scroll and I will have to undercut it at some point because otherwise it will when you look from the side it will look too thick no don't do that
No, I'm concentrating. <laughs> this is hard to do. It might not look it, uh, and it doesn't apparently take much effort, and it doesn't. Because I'm slicing very little and very fine pieces of wood, but um, I've got to slice the right ones. Sometimes, and you can see me doing it here, um, it's better to move your whole, or easier sometimes to move your whole body than it is to try and just sort of move you know, your elbow or your arm around. It allows you to have uh, the tool sort of stationary to your, to your body, which gives you, you know, because you're not then flexing those muscles, you're using sort of your, your leg muscles, which are used to actually this sort of thing. Then um, you've got a, you know you often you often you do get a better control over the movement. It's usually a lot smoother. By the way, if you drop a chisel, don't try and catch it. Jump out of its way. So develop the um, the reflex of jumping backwards. Now, usually, a chisel like this one will land that way down because the handle's heavier. But that doesn't mean it won't bounce <laughs> and spin. So get out of its way. It's um, it's cheaper to replace a damaged chisel than it is to um, spend the time with your you know your leg cut open. Now, typically at that point, what I might do, and I might do it now, but I don't often uh, use. A sandpaper and this is wet and dry so it's a really smooth sandpaper but uh, typically at this point what I might well do is you know get some sandpaper out and sand the shape I don't like necessarily sanding a carving um, yes it smooths it down but what it tends to do is drive the sawdust into the pores of the wood and it gives it a sort of a, a milky looking colour. Um, now that's not so bad if you then subsequently go over and put something like an oil over it or perhaps a varnish. But uh, if you don't then um, it can sort of look milky. Uh, milky. And sort of white now then I've done some shaping I'm going to do is continue that shape now across because there's a, a bit missing there
Now I've got a flat spot here which I'll need to deal with. Another flat spot there. And uh, the way I'm going to deal with that actually is by gouging the centre out of it. So having just smoothed that edge off, <laughs> I need to do that again. But as you can see how this is sort of bent in, well strictly speaking to bend in like that you, this will start to bend to curve as well. And of course, typically, I just realised that as I was carving this. And this is where you have to, tr using a gouge, you have to try and create a smooth surface. I can't go in with the flat chisel on here because it won't, it'll just pick up the grain. I have to cut it cross grain. And um, I can't cut a curve, an inner curve, with a flat chisel. So I'm using a, the, the flattest gouge I've got, but it is a gouge, it's a curve. I don't actually need anything, a greater curve than this. So that's, um, that's fine, but uh, um, the, the more deeper the gouge, the more U-shaped it is, the harder it is to create a flat surface with it. Now I'll switch back to the flat one. So that I can knock these points off on this side here. I've got a, a sharp point, a sharp edge. One thing, you, one thing you shouldn't do with a chisel, which is what I'm about to do, is use it as a draw knife or as a scraper. It blunts the chisel. Um, actually, as a scraper, you can use almost anything that's got a fairly sharp corner on it. Even like this, the side of the chisel. This is, this one isn't that sharp, but... Uh, It just pick up, pick up wood. I 
Right, there we go. I will undercut that at some point, just not yet. So we've now got something that wants a little bit of work, but we've got something that comes down, comes up and, and bends around and looks like it is, but it certainly looks like it from here. And you just need to take this, smooth this backwards a bit. That transition into that dip had a, an odd bump in it, which is what I'm just feeling my way through. That's it. That'll do. Okay, so the next thing then will be to more or less do the same thing on this side here. Ooh. So we've come up to a point, um, and then we, I might extend that this way a little bit more, I think, to about, so that the apex is where I said it was going to be about there. That's a little bit um, too early. So extend it that way and then we dive under. So I'll turn it this way so it's a bit easier for me to carve too. Give you a little bit better view of it. may actually need to go a little bit deeper still. What I'm trying to avoid is the flat top. Because that just will not look nor feel right. Um, because it, it will catch the light in a different a different way to the rest of the uh, the rest of the shape.
Hadi. Yeah, so what I'm doing now is using it rather like a plane uh, by tipping it sideways like this uh, it slices as much as it chisels which sometimes can be really useful to get rid of um, high points but sometimes if you're trying to drive the chisel forwards what you have a tendency to do is drive it down which of course then makes the um, potentially makes the thing you're trying to smooth out so deeper whereas running it sideways can be easier to hold the chisel because you're not applying as much force Uh, to slice as you are to uh, to push. Still not quite where I want it to be. Okay, well we'll take it there and then we'll drive that over and we'll see what happens. We may actually end up coming back and doing more on it again. But I think what we're going to do though is we'll do that on the next stream rather than this one. Because it's now uh, 9 o'clock. So rather than me starting to do that bit, we will carry on with it tomorrow. So for those of you that are watching, thank you very much. Um, I will continue with this on the next stream. The next stream should be tomorrow, which is uh, Sunday of course, starting at 7pm UK time or thereabouts. UK time by the way is GMT, um, or Universal Time Coordinated UTC. They're about the same. There are minor discrepancies, but more or less the same. And. Um, We'll go from from then until about 9 p.m. Maybe a little late if I am. It's because I'm eating food. Important stuff is food. Stops me finishing a stream early because I'm hungry. So it's uh, it's a good thing to have before I start. We will continue with that bit of the banner. Uh, this banner will determine the frame depth. This is the outer bit. Once I've got that, we're leaving the uh, gibber. Gibber, gibber, sticking out. So we're going to have him popping out of the frame, I think. I think that will look a lot better rather than him being behind it. It's a little bit more sort of terrifying. The, the thing leaping out at you with all the teeth. Um, they are going to be interesting. <laughs> or rather, the inside of the mouth is. Because we'll need to undercut them a little bit to make them look like teeth. Uh, but that's where the um, the drill 
will come in a lot handy. It will be a lot easier to do it with that. Um, I am thinking whether this is something that might need a bit of colour on it afterwards, but we shall see with that. Um, interestingly, yeah, some, if the jewel, for example, uh, was sort of maybe done with lacquer like stain, could be ink, for example, or maybe a watercolour type thing, then that might give it sort of a more jewel like thing. If we keep it in, still haven't decided, but it's still there. You can always take it out. That's the nice thing. You can't put it in, but you can you can take it out because it's on top. If it was underneath, uh, then we'd be leaving it out and maybe putting it in afterwards. But um, because it's on top, we we'll leave it in and take it out afterwards if we don't want to. Carving this though, in fact, I might take that curve a little bit further into here. But we shall see that when we get there. Uh, so yes, I was saying tomorrow night from about 7 p.m. UK time, subject to meals. So if you'd like to be notified when I go live, there's the follow button up at the top right of the screen there. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Zaragonat. I do tweet when I go live. Or if for any reason I can't stream, I will also mention that on Twitter. If you'd also like to support the, uh, the stream, and if the following does support the stream, so if you care to do that, that would be absolutely fantastic. There's two more direct methods of support up there. There's the bits, which help to pay for things like the wood, and new chisels, bits and pieces for streaming, that sort of thing, as well as the subscriptions, both of which go towards, as I said, the, uh, the stuff that you see or are used to see on the stream. So with that, again, thank you for watching. Hope to see you on the next stream. Bye for now.